Hello there, people of the internet. Recently, I've gotten some questions on previous videos that I've done about electronics test equipment, such as oscilloscopes, as we have here in front of me. And if you haven't seen them, I'll definitely throw a link down in the description and, you know, up in the right corner in the usual places you find stuff like this. But basically, they were asking... How do you use electronic test equipment, such as oscilloscopes, to test circuits and, and electronics parts and whatnot? And, of course, they're very good questions. But the first thing you should do is make sure that your oscilloscope is calibrated before you make any measurements. And, of course, you're probably wondering, all right, how do I do that? And why would I do that? Now the why is very, very simple. If we come down here, I have this sheet of paper that we can use as a measurement tool. And if I take our wire, he, the test lead here, you can see that it's technically two units. But if I move it over here, now it's technically five units. So this measurement or measuring device is very inaccurate and the information it gives really doesn't make any sense. And of course, that's the same thing you want, You again, that's the same thing you don't want to happen with your oscilloscope. You want it to give you accurate and measurements that are accurate and make sense. Well, how do we do this? Now again, where this is located and exactly the measurements will vary from scope to scope. But mine down here is right down here. And you'll see this little thing that says CAL period P period 5VP hyphen P. And basically what that means is the CAL is the calibrate and it's set and this is the terminal where you can clamp it and it will calibrate your scope. Right? And it will put out a test wave, test signal that is a square wave. And from the top of the wave, so the top peak to the bottom of the peak, the low end of it, it will be half a volt or 0.5 volts. And that's basically what that's saying. Now, again, your scope may differ, but generally this is quite common. So what we can do is we can take our test lead or at least the positive end. Normally they're marked as red. And we can clamp it, and you'll see. There we go, generates a wave. And we can take our negative, or our ground, and just kind of put it to the side, make sure it doesn't touch anything, because it's going from the internal of the scope, and of course the internal of the scope is grounded to the scope. So, <laughs> there you go. And again, you'll notice We'll just get that ever so slightly adjusted. And if you notice, the top of the wave to the bottom of the wave takes up one of these centimeter blocks. And if we go over to our settings, you'll see that one centimeter is set for half a volt. So that basically means from the top of this wave to the bottom of this wave, is half a volt. And guess what our test signal is? Lovely, half a volt. So it's properly calibrated to give out accurate measurements, or at least for amplitude, right? But let's just say for the sake of argument, it wasn't. How do we would do this? Now, if we look at the measurement dial here, this, you'll actually see it's technically two. So you have your outer one, which is, in my case, it's black. It's this kind of black knob here. And again, the coloring and where they're located will vary from scope to scope. But if we turn it, you'll see that adjusts our setting. And this red knob, or maroon knob, again, your colors will vary. On the outside, we'll adjust the calibration of it. You can see I can adjust this here. And when it's right in place, you'll hear it click, right? So 
So that's how you measure, make sure you have the correct amplitude, or in this case, voltage. Because voltage and amplitude are basically hand in hand. But what about the other measurement, such as things like frequency, or in this case, well, also measured in hertz? Well, that does it too. We come back to our thing. Now, I don't believe it's listed, but again, you can always, on mine, it may be listed on yours. If you can't find it, you can always check on, you know, the internet, or maybe they'll sometimes mention it in the manual. But I believe my scope here puts out a one kilohertz wave. So it technically will put out a one kilohertz wave with an amplitude of half a volt peak to peak. So we can do the same thing too, just like we did before. We come over, the out, again, your scope, it'll vary from scope to scope, but the, on mine, the outer knob here, this black one, is the, for the timing, for the setting, and the maroon is the calibration knob. Now this one doesn't click, but that's a little bit different. But, with this, it's a little bit harder because this is measured in timing, so you see time per centimeter, and not in hertz or frequency. But to convert to that, it's very simple. You just invert it. Or you can raise it to the negative first power if you really want to get simple there. So what we would do, is we would figure out, okay, one kilohertz, inverted, that would give you the timing that we would need, and then we could figure out, you know, we have our units here at two centimeters, and we could figure out, okay, one kilohertz, inverted, to give you, the, would be so many units, and then again, you could adjust your settings accordingly. All right. Now, m my scope is a little wonky and I think the picture is starting to collapse from age which means I would have to open this up and you know tweak all the adjustments inside and that's probably going to be another video for another day so my measurements might be off ever so slightly but again for what I'm demonstrating on these videos it works perfectly fine but basically that's how you would calibrate your scope to make accurate test measurements once again, you, uh, once again, thank you for watching. If you liked what you've seen, you can always subscribe check, and check out some of the previous videos if you want to learn more about electronics test equipment. I've got a couple good videos up here. But, all right, thanks for watching.